started with a pretty loud bang in the smartwatch department where Huawei unveiled their Huawei watch at Marble World Congress. It was a beautiful 42 millimeter stainless steel and sapphire curation that ran Android Wear. And then it was showed off again and again until finally it was released a few weeks after IFA 2015 in September. The Huawei watch is really pretty, featuring an AMOLED display and a great design. It quickly became one of the favorites in the Android Wear ecosystem, and its price, while it can get pretty pricey, starts at a relatively low $349, so when considering the entry-level Apple Watch with the same materials, that starts well over $500. Then about two months after the Huawei Watch, we came across the official launch date of Apple's first entirely new product in the post-Steve Jobs era with the brand new Apple Watch. It was a huge launch. Launch, one that took Apple Watch out of stock for months. And it wasn't just the sport model. The Apple Watch stainless steel flew off the shelves. The Apple Watch may not look like an ordinary watch, it's not round for sure, but it's one that still holds the title of the most comfortable smartwatch I've ever worn. And with the tremendous amounts of options for bands available, the Apple Watch fit right in with anyone who uses the iPhone. Then a few months roll by and we get to IFA 2015, two big watches were released, one of them being the new Moto 360 Gen 2. It was the refresh it deserved because this new Moto 360 is one of the most classy looking Android Wear devices on the market. It came with a little brother too, a 42mm model that was designed primarily for the female wearer, but it could go both ways. They've also upgraded the internals and went away with the TI OMAP processor to the more typical Snapdragon 400. They've also increased the pixel density as well. And the last big stir in the smartwatch world from IFA was the Samsung Gear S2. Not an Android Wear device, but rather a Tizen device. However, it may be the most important thing they've made. Unlike Android Wear devices that rely solely on touch, the Gear S2 takes an Apple Watch approach of a physical interface. But unlike the crown on the Apple Watch, the Gear S2 uses a rotating bezel. And isn't it a clever thing. The rotating bezel on the Gear S2 makes tremendous sense and it works unbelievably well with the Tizen software. It has a beautiful AMOLED display and Samsung's own processor inside running everything very smoothly. I suppose my only complaint is the small size of the S2. Only coming in at 30.2 millimeters at the display, it's definitely not huge even for someone like me with very dainty wrists. Now of course there were other announcements but between these four they represent much of the market. These four help push smartwatches forward and made them better for the next generation of wearables that we will see in 2016. If you like this piece on smartwatches, make sure to hit that thumbs up button below. And as always, my name is Marco Hanna, and I'll catch you in the next video.